as we know by now, today we are commemorating Palm Sunday as uh, we have come to call it. And it's very interesting to see those palm leaves. As I see the uh, picture on the left, there are palm leaves and I don't know what the uh, other leaves are. <laughs> I'm presuming they are also some type of palm, I guess. And I was also uh, noting, I think it is Hasani who actually has a palm with her. I'm not sure Hasani is still with us, but Hasani, if you have your palm, can you show us your palm? I thought you had a palm with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have your palm with you, Hasani? Did... Okay. I was just wondering whether you had a uh, you know, actually brought a palm with you today, all right? Anyway, we can we can see it whenever you are ready with it. Uh, well, the, the palm, uh, you know, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, of course, you know, I have memories of uh, attending many years back the, the family church that we belong to and still remember using or taking these palms and uh, they, the priest used to lead us in a procession around the church. And I still remember we used, they used to sing all kinds of songs and we used to go around the church. And so that memory still sticks in my mind. But of course we know that uh, as you see on uh, your screen on the left, the triumphal entry, the it's the story of Jesus coming to Jerusalem, even as we were led in the creative reading. And of course, the interesting part also is how the people reacted to Jesus uh, entering Jerusalem. Now, the, this is the beginning of what we also call the Passion Week. As we proceed into the week, uh, the later part of the week, we have Maundy th Thursdays, many Christians remember that as Maundy Thursday, uh, the washing of the feet by Jesus uh, of all the disciples. And then, of course, the crucifixion, moving on to the resurrection. Uh, now, it's very interesting to read the narrative in the Gospels. Uh, we were led in the reading in the book of Matthew of how the, you know, Jesus came and how the people reacted. And uh, we also have a reading in the book of uh, John. And at this time, I'd like to read from the book of John. And you will notice on your screen uh, on, on the left. This is taken from John chapter 12. And let me read to you what John writes and records about this particular event that took place uh, many years back. Beginning in verse 12, it says, The next day, the great crowd, multitude that came to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it, as it is written. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. Verse 16, his disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him, because they heard that he had done this sign. So, as we have read in the Gospel of John, you know, uh, it's, very, it's, it's very significant. The details that are spelt out for us. And why are those details given? Well, 
we need to recognize that uh, Jesus was actually fulfilling prophecy. Right? Uh, a statement is being made that when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on this donkey, people immediately recognized that there is something special about this person. They remembered the scriptures in the Old Testament. And they wondered, is, could this be the Messiah? Could this be the prophesied Messiah? Because the people in Jerusalem had witnessed many who had come and claiming they were messiahs. But could this individual be the Messiah? And if he is the Messiah, could he be the Lord? You know, the Lord that was promised uh, in the scriptures. Now, like I was saying, uh, the, uh, John uses this, the, the, the verses from Psalm chapter 118, verses 25 and 26, when he says, Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so very clearly, he is borrowing from these verses, which depicts that Jesus indeed was the prophesied Messiah. Zechariah chapter 9 was read to us, where again it talks about how indeed he will come on a donkey. The interesting thing is the detail. You know, all of those details were fulfilled and people couldn't, you know, mistake Jesus now. Uh, as to who indeed he was. He was that prophesied Messiah. Prophesied, you know, years and years ago. In fact, going back into the book of Genesis, we know that a Messiah would indeed come to repair the damage that was introduced by, uh, you know, Adam and Eve because they disobeyed God. But in the part of this, you know, all of these details written for us, the people couldn't hold back their passion and they shouted, you know, as we saw on the screen, Hosanna. And then they talk about how this man is the blessed Lord coming in the name of the Lord. But this word Hosanna rings in my ears. And I thought today I'll focus on this word Hosanna. And of course, it immediately reminds me of the song we sing, you know, on many occasions uh, we sang Hosanna, Hosanna, uh, didn't we? Especially when we were moving away from singing hymns, then to introduce choruses. This was one of those, you know, initial choruses we used to sing. And uh, I'm sure it, uh, you know, it, it once again brings back memories for me. As we song, as we sang, you know, this song. But what is this word Hosanna and why do the people use it? Now, it could be thought of as a declaration of praise, similar to the word hallelujah, right? Hosanna could be something similar to praise uh, the savior that we have. Now, the Hebrew uh, root word is two words combined in one, and one is the word yasha, which means deliver or save. The other is anna, which means beg, beseech. Right? In other words, these two words combine to form the word osiana in the Hebrew. My pronunciation may be absolutely horrible, but in the Hebrew, it has something, it goes something like osiana. Or in English, and let's stick with the English, Hosanna, right? Um, so the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, it basically means save us. We pray, O oh Lord. So when the people were shouting Hosanna, they were saying, save us. We pray, O oh Lord. Literally, it means I beg you to save us. Or please deliver us. It's a plea that they were shouting to the Lord, you know, a plea for, say, you know, being saved, a plea indeed for salvation. But 
What was it that prompted these people to shout Hosanna? Uh, what, what, was, what was in their mind when they were you know, using this word and the very word which was you know, mentioned in the Old Testament? And to understand that, we need to go back to the reading, which I just read from John chapter 12. Let me pick up two verses from John 12, and that is verses 17 and 18, where it says, Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the word. And verse 18 says, Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So there is a special reference to Lazarus, raising and raising Lazarus from the dead. They suddenly remembered that as they were shouting, Hosanna. They remembered that this person who is coming on a donkey actually gave life to a dead person, and that was Lazarus. So people were wit had witnessed what Jesus had done. And this indeed was a great miracle. And for some of them, they were absolutely convinced that this could be the Messiah. Nobody could do a sign like this. Nobody could perform a, a miracle, a, a never seen miracle like this, where a dead person would actually be raised to life. And so when they remembered that, their Hosanna became all the more passionate. Save us, O oh Lord. In other words, when they remembered that Jesus could save or raise Lazarus from the dead, he indeed could save us. And hence the plea, save us, O oh Lord. Deliver us, O oh Lord. Hosanna, that's what it means. Right? And so, as they continued to greet Jesus, and of course, they took those palm trees, they took uh, and they put their coats on the, on the ground, they were basically remembering that if Jesus could do this, then indeed he must be the promised king. Maybe he is the one to restore Israel, the, the kingdom of Israel, right? But they were shocked. They were shocked a little later in the week. Why were they shocked? I mean, here they greeted Jesus. They were hoping for a kingdom now to be restored. They would no, they would no more, longer be slaves under the Romans. But when they saw Jesus going on to the cross, they were absolutely disappointed. They thought, this man came to deliver them. But it almost seems like he is unable to deliver himself. He has been handed over to the Romans as a common criminal. And then to see him die, it was absolutely shocking for them. They did not understand what Jesus was actually doing or what was actually happening to Jesus. They couldn't understand what was Jesus actually accomplishing when he was indeed going to the cross? And sometimes, brethren, we go through that ourselves, don't we? Many a times there are issues or situations that take place in our lives. We hope that, yes, everything is going to be okay. You know, the Savior has come. And suddenly there's a twist to the story. Something doesn't match. And it, you know, right now I am wondering, just as we were hoping that we were sorting out this problem in the church, suddenly there is a twist. Suddenly it seems like Dr. Greg <laughs> wants to wait for a whole year before we can actually sort out the problem. And I'm wondering, why, Lord, why? I mean, I thought it was going all okay. Is there something in your life that you thought is all falling into place, but there is a twist. You don't understand what's happening at this moment. It's unexpected and you don't know how things might actually work out. Well, 
we know the story of what happened to Jesus and he was actually fulfilling uh, you know, a not only a prophecy, but he was actually accomplishing salvation that they prayed for in a much more comprehensive manner, in a much more comprehensive way. We don't see it now. But the question is, can we trust Jesus to work it out one way or the other in a much more comprehensive way? You know, talking about being uh, surprised, talking about not being able to understand the disciples, his very own disciples that were with him were not able to understand. Let me read you a verse from, uh, uh, from the same chapter, chapter 12, verse 16. Notice it says, at first, his disciples did not understand all this. As they were seeing Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And of course, then to see Jesus die, go on the cross. They just were absolutely so disappointed that some of them maybe decided to go back to their fishing trade or whatever they were doing. So at first, his disciples did not understand. But then it says, only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Well, you know, once again, we can look at situations in our own lives. We don't understand why some things happen in the way it does. On many occasions, I have counseled people uh, you know, who are going through great disappointments in their lives and they don't fully understand what's happening. And one of the advice I give them is, remember that the story is not complete. The story is not over yet. So I encourage them not to give up. Even though they don't understand, don't give up. Because we are following a Messiah who has indeed become Lord. And he knows the story from beginning to end. Let's just trust him. Let's just remain with him. And he will, full, he will complete the story. Maybe completely, you know, surprising to us. But he knows how it should be accomplished. And so the disciples also were able to understand after Jesus was glorified. They were able to connect the prophecies and Recognize that indeed Jesus was the Messiah. So, Hosanna, it says, the people shouted, save us. They were shouting, we pray, O Lord. I'd like to leave you with just two thoughts to meditate on. Not only today, but as the week goes by, I'd like you to meditate on two thoughts that comes from this uh, Declaration that people make, Hosanna, save us, we pray, O Lord. And the first meditation I'd like you to think about is that we need to be saved. As then as people were shouting, save us, O Lord, deliver us, O Lord. The word Hosanna means that. They recognize that they need to be saved. They recognize that they were all slaves under a foreign government. We need to recognize that we need saved, to be saved. We desperately need to be saved because we are all dying in one sense. The world around us is dying. The tragedy of death is so much all around us. And it is so tragic to hear of John Viswa passing away, Praveen's brother-in-law passing away. Be so Tragic to hear somebody is now down with COVID. And just the other, just yesterday I heard that someone close to us is down with COVID. Right. Even as we talk about the, the tragedy of death, I have heard, I don't know if you've heard in the news of a mass shooting that took place in the United States. You know, people innocently going into a mall, into a supermarket trying to do their purchases, suddenly find a bullet ripping through their heart. And 10 people die. 10 people die. You know, the 
tragedy of death is all around us. The burden of death is all around us. And it's not only just physical death, but sometimes we see death in so many different forms. Emotional death, relational death, spiritual death. People are struggling and dying and losing friendships, losing relationships, the end of relationships. Just yesterday, I was attending the seminar where I had the blessing and the opportunity to speak. And I had the blessing of being able to bring Christ to a largely Muslim audience. And the, the uh, seminar was actually organized by a women's welfare group that looks after sexually abused uh, women. And the organizer was telling us that they sometimes have to witness children, children being raped, trying to survive the, the tragedy of rape. And I could not believe, you know, what we were hearing of what is happening in our society. Sometimes children who are as young as one year old are raped. We have the tragedy of death all around us. You know, our best efforts, the best efforts we put through our laws and our politics and our governmental situations, such settings, maybe through technology, maybe through medicine, is unable to stop the tragedy and the, and the stench of death. Right? We are powerless to stop this march of death. And sometimes it's discouraging when you hear reports like this. Sometimes we feel, what's the use? What's, you know, we get into that very depressive mood. Uh, if you're all just going to die, what's the use? And that's when perhaps we should remember the word that we are meditating on. Hosanna. And that's the second point I'd like you to think about. Hosanna. Perhaps. We are, we are made to remember who is going to save us. There's death all around us, but who is going to save us? And the answer is Hosanna. Save us, O oh Lord, we pray. Because only Jesus can raise the dead. He can raise the dead physically. He can raise the dead emotionally. He can raise the dead relationally. And spiritually, finally, ultimately, he can raise us into the spiritual realm of well-being, of abundant life. Hosanna, Jesus came to save us, not to condemn us. He is the author of life. He stands for life. He means life. He is life. And that's why people screamed out, Hosanna, save us, O Lord, for indeed we are perishing. And as we sing that song, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest. Indeed, we can raise up the name of Jesus. Lift his name up because he is our savior. He is indeed come to save us more comprehensively than anybody else can ever save us. But he came riding on a donkey. This humble servant who raised up Lazarus from the dead, uh, you know, comes to bring salvation. And that's what people shouted out. You know, he comes in the name of the Lord. Salvation belongs to him. And so he is our only hope. Because he is the only one who went to death, the crucifixion, and actually came out the other side victorious in the resurrection. He, Jesus, is our Hosanna because he saves us. He's become our savior. And so, brethren, as we conclude, may this Palm Sunday remind us we have a savior. A savior that brought a man, a dead man back to life. A savior that he himself entered death to conquer it.
to vanquish it. A savior who loves us. A savior who has a father who loves us. Right? A savior who gave us the Holy Spirit to give us a second birth. We have the opportunity of being born again. A savior who will come again and take us to our real inheritance. Life in the Father, Son, Spirit. Even as we were reminded in the opening prayer. Forevermore being able to enjoy the, the blessing of life. Life forevermore. So may you have a blessed Palm Sunday and a Passion Week. As we will continue to meditate upon a savior indeed who has come and we can and we know the story has not ended. He is coming again. He's coming again to bring salvation to all who will look up to him. And so let's shout Hosanna. We have a savior. God bless you.